Well, hi. If y'all clicked on this thumbnail, you could probably see that at one time I was morbidly obese. We're going to talk about my 120 pound weight loss. We're going to talk about how I have kept that weight off for over eight years. And hopefully you'll find this video a little bit of encouragement. Whether or not you just want to lose five to 20 pounds, or if you have a more significant amount of weight to lose like I did, or if you're happy with your weight but you just want to maintain it and you find that that's a struggle after you reach a certain age or become menopausal. This sounds like something you might be interested in. Stick around. We're about to get right into it. In those Gucci slides, yeah, yeah, I wonder where she hides under her disguise. Yeah, 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 yeah. And all the girls around the world, they want to be so I'm Mona, y'all. I'm from South Louisiana. If you're new, welcome. If you're returning, thank you for coming back. I'm almost 54 years old. I'll be 54 August 1st, and I am so flawed and look much older than my age. One of my subscribers in a recent video pointed that out so kindly that, you know, she was just surprised that I was only 53 because I looked so much older. And although... I really did not enjoy hearing that. I know it's true. Between the significant amount of weight loss and between that and becoming menopausal at 40 and not having any estrogen systemically since then, I have lost laxity in my skin, especially my jaws, this turkey neck right here, and I look older than my current age. So we're going to talk about some of the ways that I try to improve the look of my skin as it is because I've had no Botox, no fillers, no surgery. Not that I would be opposed to it, it's just not the right time in my budget. I can't afford the downtime. There are various reasons why that's just not the right choice for me right now. So we're gonna talk about how I treat what I have and try to make it look better. And we're also gonna talk about intermittent fasting and how you might be able to get that to work for you. Just remember that any weight loss program you should always or consult with your doctor before you start down that journey. I am not giving medical advice, I'm just sharing my story in hopes that it may motivate, inspire, or help you. We're gonna give you a little background. So I started gaining weight after Hurricane Katrina hit Louisiana. So most of my life I was not an overweight person. In fact, I was on the small side for many of my years. I'm gonna throw up a few pictures throughout the video just so you can see some snapshots through my life of me being small. So obesity was a new thing but once the weight gain started by the time my dad got sick and ended up losing his battle to pancreatic cancer I had gained a whole small teenage person or added their weight to my weight. And it was pretty hard to come back from that. There were two things that made me determined to lose the weight, to make up my mind that no matter what, I was going to get that weight off. And those events were pretty significant in my life. After my dad died, a few months later was going to be my mom and dad's 47th wedding anniversary, and I didn't want her to be sad on that day, so I took her and two of her friends to Memphis, and we were touring Graceland. And when we got to the part where you could go outside and tour the planes, I didn't fail up to getting up the steps for the plane because I had had a previous experience with that. And that's going to be my reason number two. So I sat down on the ground and was just fiddling with my phone or whatever. And when they came out, I could not use my arm strength to push up this weight from the ground. Two strangers saw me trying to get up and grabbed my hand. That was so humiliating, so mortifying. That was sort of icing on the cake. There had been one experience prior to this that had made that the icing on the cake, and that was me traveling for work, and the tarmac was broke or out of commission, and they had to wheel up those mobile stairs up to the plane outside, so we had to go outside and climb those steep stairs into the plane instead of just walking into it on that plank. And I had my carry-on, and I had my backpack, and then I had all this weight and I could barely get up those steps and it probably took me 20 minutes of being in the plane to regain my breath. So if any of these experiences resonate with you, I just want to tell you that you are not alone and that you can get the weight off if you want to. I also want to tell you that you're not less than no matter what size you are, no matter how many wrinkles you have on the outside 
It's what's inside that really matters, and it's that attitude. So if you put on a smile and you're confident in yourself, then the world is going to see you in a different way. You have to love yourself first. And no matter what, no matter where you are in your path or your journey, you're not invisible to me. You're not less than. I see you. I care. And together, we can have the best life after 50. So let's talk about intermittent fasting and how I've kept the weight off for over eight years. Keto works for me. Intermittent fasting works for me, and Weight Watchers has worked for me. I think any of those, depending on what your lifestyle is, would work for you, and that one of the three most likely would fit within your lifestyle as a method for maintaining weight loss, losing weight. I like intermittent fasting, and I'm going to give you some tips to start off with. Mm. Let me back up and let me tell you how I intermittent fast and then I'm going to tell you how you might get started on your intermittent fasting journey in a way that will be successful for you. I do 16-8. I have a 16 hour window that I do not eat, that I fast. In that window I can have water, as much water as I want, as much non-sugary, non-caloric coffee as I want or tea or any beverage that is free of calories and sugar. During the eight hours is the, the window that I choose to eat whatever I'm going to eat in. On the ordinary, I can pretty much eat whatever I want during that eight hour window. But unlike before, where I started gaining weight and I failed to push the pause button, now I'm always doing self checks and I'm ready to push the pause button if I get out of the, the zone, the healthy weight zone that I've set for myself. So I give myself like a five pound window and if I exceed that, then during my eight hours of fasting, I do keto. Just until I get back in my, my frame and then I resume eating as I want during that eight hour frame. I like intermittent fasting because it's I can choose the frame. So I can do it from let's say 9 to 5, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. That could be my fasting hours. Or I could do it from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Or I could do it from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. So depending on what your lifestyle is like and how your day goes, you can choose which 8 hours you're going to eat and which 16 hours you're going to fast so that it works with your lifestyle and it's not a permanent time frame so let's just say normally I do 9 to 5 but I'm going to have dinner with my family at 7 on one day well I'm not going to sit at the table and not eat I'm going to participate I'm going to move my time frame so you can adjust it to meet the needs of your life I feel like it works well with my life and although it was difficult at first now I'm never hungry during the outside fasting part of my time frame. And I have a lot less brain fog than I was having. And my focus is so clear. I even think even my ADHD has improved. And my clarity of thought has improved. My sleep has improved. And definitely I can maintain my weight. There are definite benefits in my mind to choosing intermittent fasting. It keeps my glucose levels down. I think that's healthier for me overall. But of course, check with your doctor. So I'm going to talk to you about my steps for you, my tips for you to start intermittent fasting if this is something you might be interested in. Consider picking one to two days a week and picking four hours that you're going you're gonna to fast and just fast in those four hours. In the hours that you're not fasting, drink plenty of water, eat plenty of fruit, things to fill you up, bulk, fiber, protein, nuts, all of those things. And when you find that you're hungry, or you think that you're hungry, you might just be bored, or you might just need a distraction. So I would suggest that first you try to drink a glass of water, Secondly, if that does not work, then I try to see if it's at all possible to take a walk. 
And you'd be surprised at how that will change you from hungry to not hungry, just getting out and getting some exercise instead. I'm not talking about any kind of hard walk or, or really exerting yourself. Just get out and walk. Walk around your house. Walk back and forth in your office at work. Just do or do some jumping jacks or some bends or stretches. Just do some kind of physical activity where you are. Even step in place. And I think you'll find that that will help you be able to make it through your fast. Then I would increase my days from 2 to 3 to 5. And you can stay at the 3 to 5 day fast if you want to. You don't have to increase it to the 6 or 7 days that I do. After you get comfortable with 4 hours at 3 to 5 days in a week, you can increase your time to 8 hours of fasting and 16 hours of time that you can eat and then you can increase it to 12 hours of not eating and you can stay there for a long time doing 12 and 12 even that brings some benefits but ultimately I think you find your best bang for your buck if you can get to 16 and 8 but if you can never do 16 and 8 that is not a reason not to do it at all I think 12 and 12 can still be helpful 14 and 10 can be helpful so this is, is not a one-size-fits-all, and you work yourself up and find what works for you. The other thing that works if you feel like you're getting hungry, some people may say this is not complete fasting, but I drink these sparkling ice drinks, zero sugar with vitamins and antioxidants. This makes me feel like I'm having a treat. And if you're doing the purest form, then you probably would just want to do water. But I don't enjoy plain water, and this allows it to work for me. It comes in a variety of flavors. I love it, and it doesn't seem to break my fast. It still allows me to be successful. So you got to find what works for you. I'd like to know if you've ever done intermittent fasting, what were your holdups, like what were your barriers to being successful at it? If it was approved by your physician, you know, what... What reasons did you feel like it wasn't right for you? If you can tell me in the comments, maybe I can give you some tips or further help you break through those barriers. If you'd like a video just on intermittent fasting, like in more detail, this video is covering, you know, the kind of the whole thing. But I can condense it and give you the science behind it and a lot more instructive guidelines. So let's talk about the outcome of significant weight loss. It definitely has been the best thing to happen to me is to get the weight back off and return to sort of my pre-obesity state. I'm, I have a small frame. My finger, this is like a size 4 ring and it's always loose. So I probably would, would wear like a 3 and something ring. They didn't even make them or couldn't size this down to that, to that level. I have very small wrists. I have very small ankles, my frame is small, so carrying a lot of weight for me is not good. I can move around, there's nothing that I can't do, I can keep up, and I just feel so much better when I'm smaller. But my self-worth is no longer wrapped up in my size, it's just that it's better physically and health-wise for me. But the weight loss did come with some negatives, and that was the extra skin and the fact that I do look older than what I am. What I do to combat this is, one, I still get up, get ready. The advice of two friends okay. stuck with me. There were things that I already knew, but I carry them with me now daily, and, and I often repeat it to myself. So one is by Barbara Jean, Age is Just a Number. You should check out her channel. She always says at the end of her videos, get up and show up because you're worth it. And so that's what you have to do, right? You do have to get up and show up. You have to put your best face forward, whether you wear makeup or you don't. You know, do your skincare, put yourself together a little bit. I have a, a ponytail today. It's time for my haircut. You know, it's not looking uh, due this weekend. It's not looking its finest. But do something. It's brushed. It's clean. I have some makeup on my face. I get up and get dressed, put clothes on clothes that matches, clothes that fits, and you just feel better about yourself. And if your attitude is good, you look better to other people. Now, of course, some people are always going to be critical. That's where your self-love has to come in. 
I also have a way, to, you know, I have a, a really solid skincare routine, and although that is not going to get rid of extra skin, it definitely helps. If I did not do that, it would be worse. If I did not wear my sunscreen, then I would have future aging or additional aging, which would make me look even older. At some point, maybe I'm going to catch up, right? If I slow the clock now, my age will catch up to where my skin is if it doesn't get any worse. But this is something that I found has really improved my confidence in my neck. You'll see me do a lot of videos on turkey neck or loose skin because I try almost all the products that come out. And although I know that none will be the same as surgery, there are things that do make a difference that can boost the appearance and boost my confidence just a little bit. One of them, whether you believe in castor oil or you don't believe in castor oil, this is one thing that castor oil has done for my benefit. I like these thyroid packs by the company Duron. And I do have a discount code to get 10% off one of these if you so choose. Take this little pad, I put my organic castor oil by Heritage Store on this, and then I leave it. I massage the castor oil into my neck and into this skin, and then I put this on at night, and I sleep with it. It keeps the castor oil from being sticky, from getting in my hair and making my hair greasy. It prevents it from making a mess, and when I wake up in the morning and take this off, this is no crepiness. The crepiness is completely gone. The loose, saggy skin is still there a little bit, but it looks softer and it's much less noticeable. Does it tighten the skin? No, it does not tighten the skin, but it softens the crepiness to where that is not so noticeable. And then once I do my skincare routine in the morning, I top it off with the Advanced Moisturizer by Dermatology. And that I have always extras on standby. I just finished this one and I'm moving into this one. And yes, you can use any moisturizer on your skin, but this one truly makes a difference. It makes a difference because the ingredient deck is stacked with good hydrating, plumping, moisturizing ingredients that also do what the castor oil did all night and it plumps and moisturizes and hydrates the skin so that it looks good for about 10 to 12 hours. It does make a difference. Not all moisturizers are the same. The third thing is I always wear my sunscreen. That is to prevent future damage to that site. I don't want it to age any more than it has to, right? And there's also the tape. I showed you guys in another video the face tape. I can link this below too. So this is Angelic Misto. There's different brands. This is Invisible Face and Neck Lift Tape. And this really does work, especially if you have longer hair or a bob, you know, something that's going to give you some hair down to here. But it can work even if your hair is short because you just put the tape higher. You can see that it's tighter if you put your fingers like this. You can see that this looks tighter if you push, pull it back. So the tape can do this. The tape can do this. And it can give you a look of younger skin. And then the other thing is I just have to be satisfied that I am here. There are people who lost their child today of a childhood illness or accident. There are people who died of leukemia today, but yet here I am alive and doing well and grateful for another day. So I have to put the look of my exterior up against the fact that I am still here. Does that mean that I can't have a YouTube channel? No, because we're not perfect. None of us are. There are lots of us that look better than I do. But if it looks good on me, then you can dang well bet it's going to look good on you. And sometimes when we have these people with skin that is so much better than mine, then we can't really tell if it's going to work for us. I have every kind of issue you can have. I have texture. I have fine lines and wrinkles. I have laxity. I have all the things thinning under my eyes. I have all the things that aging is going to bring. And so when I test a product or do a product review and it shows some improvement for me or looks good on me, then it's a good bet it'll look good on you. So that's one way to look at it. But I think that I also have value here because I keep 
things relatable and relevant and honest. And we talk about subjects, maybe some channels don't. We do beauty reviews, we talk about skincare, but I'm also going to talk about lifestyle things like gaining weight and the fact that I was fat for a while. Yeah, I don't like to talk about it. I don't like to remember it. But that's where my friend Lady MC comes in. So she's got a channel too. If y'all don't know Lady, y'all need to check her out. Her words are, there is no future in your past. And what she means by that is, I can't cry over that spilled milk. I gained the weight. I wish I hadn't. But I did. But what I have to focus on is the future. The fact that, one, that I lost the weight. One, that I kept it off. And one that I just keep going, and I still get up and show up. And that I focus on what I have today. So together, ladies, together we can make a difference for each other. This band of women that we have here on YouTube. I'm just going to encourage you to uplift each other, to support each other, and to care about each other. With a little less judgment. Together we can change the hearts of some people who feel pretty dang bad about themselves. I know because I was one of those women. It's not always because of weight. It could be for any reason. Any reason that you feel invisible or unseen. And V, by simply you makeup, also says that. She's always talking about the power of uplifting women. And she talked about being invisible and unseen in her last video. So, until the next video... Put a smile on your face. Check that attitude. Let me know what you think about intermittent fasting or if you want to hear more about my weight loss journey or if you want to hear more about intermittent fasting. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. She lives a double life, puts on a show. What's under the shadow smile? We'll never know. She's a Mona Lisa.